Hi, I am Filippo Pierdicca and this is the new tutorial of Protus VFX School that you can find in the library The Lab. Today we will use the F-Storm GeoPattern with the particle flow, the internal particle system of 3ds Max, to scatter trees on a, on a surface. Um, we will see that uh, thanks to the F-Storm GeoPattern we will be able to, to manage uh, thousands and thousands of trees uh, without using a lot of, of memory. First of all, we will need a, a ground, uh, a model of a ground where we will scatter the, the trees. You can model it or you can use a dem file to displace a plane. But anyway, the most important thing is that it has to have um, the correct UV maps. Once you have the model of the ground, create a camera in order to work on a, on a point of view, the point of view that you, that you like. And let's create a particle flow system. Okay. So, as you can see, it's a very simple uh, particle flow system where we have uh, a birth, okay, and you can set it. In this case, I've used the 200,000 particles and remember to to set the start and the stop at the at the zero frame once we have done this go to the position and use the position node the object position node where you can assign an emitter object and in this case i have used the the ground that i have uh, modeled before and I have called it grass ground I called grass ground because it's also the the, the model where I we will scatter the grass uh, later the most important thing is that here you have to choose the location and put the, the surface and here you have to turn on the flag on the density by material and choose the grayscale. So through the, the grayscale in the density by material, we can manage the particles on the, on the surface. And to do that, we have to open the material editor and pick the material of the plane, of the ground plane. As you can see, this is a multi-sub-object material where at the fourth channel there is a standard material with a composite inside. But I would choose the fourth channel because in the particle view under the density by material there is the use sub material and I have chosen the fourth channel this is because in this way I say to the particle system to use the fourth channel of the multi sub object material so the plane we will will have the the first three channels used for the for the shading and the fourth to control the particles now i will make the particle the particle flow system visible and as you can see particles are not on the entire surface of the ground object this is because inside the diffuse map of the standard is the standard material is enough you don't need to use to use an f storm material because it, it will not be rendered so 
in the diffuse channel of the standard material, put a composite, okay? And on the first level, make a gradient ramp. The gradient ramp, in this case, will set in the white where the particles will be created and black where they will be not. In fact, if I move the flag, I have to remember the position, the 38th position, if I move the flag, for example, on the right, and I update the particles, they will move on the right. Exactly of the amount that I have moved the, the flag. So I come back to the value I had before. I update and as you can see they moved on the left. Now that I have defined through the through the gradient the the, the area I need to be covered by the particles, I see that they are too too much homogeneous. So I want to create areas where there are more particles and less particles. To, to do that, I will add a second layer in the composite and I will put inside a noise. Okay, uh, And it's important to control the noise of the high and the low three, threshold um, to define the areas, so uh, put down the higher part and the lower value to to make more defined zones uh, of the of the of the presence of the of the trees. And once you turn on the the no the, the noise the level, and we update the surface. As you can see now, we have areas with less trees and areas with more trees. It's, it's very visible now. If you want areas, bigger areas with less trees, just modify the, the, the noise. For example, putting a higher value of the of the low we can put a 0 0 0.5 update and you will see less trees in these areas but this is too much but obviously it's just to show you the effect of the of this parameter Here we go. Now that we have defined the areas where we want trees, we have to give to the particle system uh, a shape. And in this case, we will use the, the geometry that is called a, a card, and it's nothing more than a plane okay and this plane should have the more or less the same size of the tree that we will that we will scatter okay so put inside the the particle system um, the shape instance node and select the tree card, the plane. So now we have the, the tree card that is placed where, where the particles are and we have to see them by selecting the type inside the display type geometry and we can see the 
all the, the cards placed on the surface but as you can see they have all the same rotation so to give it to give them um, a different rotation we can use the rotation node but in the parameters choose random horizontal this will give to the to the particles uh, a random rotation but only in the horizontal we have not the it's not updating the yeah here we are some time max uses too much time to update the viewport but anyway now we have we can see the effect of the rotation i have added a divergence value to give a little bit more noise to the to the planes because as you can see without a divergence they are all perpendicular okay with a divergence it give a bit more movement to to the cards now that we have set up the rotation we should work a bit on the scale of the of the cards and as as they have now all the same sides and so put inside the scale node and in the parameter select overwrite once and in the scale variation flag the constraint proportions and put inside uh, a value and in this case i have chose the a 20 percent of, um, of variation in the in the scale this means that the planes will have a range of scale of 20 percent around the 100 percent so now we have the the cards and they are placed on the surface but in order to use the cards we have to create a measure a measure the measure object will create an object a mesh using the object that we will pick in this case we will pick the particle system itself and we have an exact a perfect clone of the particle system unluckily it has the uh, wrong position so we have to move them by hand trying to put them in the same position of the particle flow in this case usually i choose one card and i try to move them very close to the original one here we go let's see if they are at the same eight but they should anyway better to check it and yes yes they are okay now that i have the measure at the right position i can turn off the particle flow source once we have the the measure object and we are sure that we will not move the the particle system anymore we can convert it to a editable mesh in this way we will have no more to update 
the the measure object um, when we hide the particle flow system sometimes the 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 compound measure forgets the the, the object that we picked to 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 create it so in this case just converting it, it to a editable mesh we will uh, have a workaround to this bug so now we have the the mesh with all the cards and let's put inside a f-storm geopattern select the tree we want to scatter and as you can see the gizmo is not in the right position so we can use the fit in object space for example but I have put the card here to help to help you to understand the orientation of the gizmo that should have in fact we have the the the, the cards perpendicular to the ground and parallel to the tree this means that this time we have to have the the z axis perpendicular to the to the card so to to achieve this we have to select the crop box and then turn the gizmo <coughs> we have to make it on the right side sides and don't forget to move the gizmo to the base of the tree we can make it a bit on the z smaller so now it's it's fitting and let's let's see what happened okay we have the trees <coughs> in the right position in the position that we were expecting to have uh, as you can see the material is wrong as we have to in the f-storm geopattern we have to select the okay the UV space surface but the pattern okay pattern and we have to give it the material of the trees it's this one in this case so let's go back to our point of view <coughs> to the camera And as you can see, we have 200,000 trees all over the, the surface. I hope you enjoyed the scattering tutorial through the F-Storm Geopatter. And see you soon.